This is a quick video to show you how to connect a Sele logic analyzer to an example Intel Systems Spy Flash storage chip. So you need to have an Intel system, and in this case I've chosen this example development board by Aeon. It's called the Up Squared. It originally had a heat sink on the other side, which I've removed to make it easier to then try to find the Spy Flash chip here. So the first thing you always have to do is try to identify the Spy Flash chip, and to do that you're going to look around for things on the board that maybe have eight pins in our particular form factor. So the stuff on this side seems to be a little bit too small. So we check the other side and over here we've got this one potentially could be it, this one potentially could be it, that one potentially could be it. So those are all about the right size. Maybe this one, eight pins on each of them. But I'll just skip to the chase and tell you that it's actually this one here. And the way I know that is by looking at the chip markings and by saying that it says that it's a Winbond 25Q128JW. And if you look up that particular part number, you'll see that it is a spy flash chip. So now we know where the spy flash chip is, and now we need to connect to it. So the Sele comes with the following probes, and you can see that these particular probes have colors on one side, and they have all black on the other side. So the black side is ground, and the colored side is the probes. Furthermore, they have some numbering on them, which is not strictly required to line up the numbering, but it can make things a little bit simpler for you later on. So the first one is labeled 0, the next one is going to be labeled 1, and so forth. So doing, you know, making this correlate with what you plug into can just make things easier for your life for later. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to plug it into the Sele Logic Analyzer. I'm going to take my next one, I'm going to plug that in as well, because we're going to need to potentially connect up to 8 pins, but in practice we don't actually have to do that. Now, what are we going to do with this? Well, the first thing that I'm going to do, I usually skip this first probe, the one labeled 0, because it's black as if it were a ground, and so just to avoid confusing myself, I put that one off to the side and don't use it. And so I start with the one labeled 1, and then I'm going to connect it to the pin number one on the spy flash chip. So if you remember your data sheets, you need to you know, first figure out which thing is pin one. So let's zoom in here. We can see the dot there that indicates that pin one is going to be the one that's furthest to this side. So then we just need to you know, connect the probe to pin one. And so I'm going to cut between these so that you um, don't have to watch me do the whole thing. But the, the key point is that these particular probes have a little grabber thing there, so you press down and then you can grab. And so you're going to press down and connect it to this pin 1, and then we're going to do the same thing again for all the rest of them. Doing probe 1 to pin 1, probe 2 to pin 2, probe 3 to pin 3, and then pin four is the ground. So I always tend to use the first ground wire from my Sele logic analyzer, and I use that for the ground. So I connect that to pin four. And then we're going to continue that with pins five, six, and seven. We don't actually need to connect to pin eight because that's just the voltage and it'll always just be high. So there's nothing really to see there. Pin five, pin six, and pin seven. So now we have all of our probes connected from the Sele to the processor. And ultimately what we're going to need to do then is just make sure the Sele is plugged in the USB to our analysis computer. And then once we want to analyze it, we're going to start the Sele and then we're going to power on the board and watch the spy traffic that occurs at boot. And later on we'll do more complicated things.